Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about a fight that's going to kick off in a few hours between champion Ricky Burns and challenger and favorite Terence Crawford. I consider Crawford to be the superior fighter. I think Crawford is faster. I think Crawford is fresher. I think Crawford, simply put, is more creative than Ricky Burns. Right? I thought Ricky Burns looked terrible in his last fight against Ray Beltran. In fact, I thought Beltran won that fight. I believe that the crowd knew that Beltran won that fight. I view Ricky Burns as a guy who, quite frankly, is really fighting Father Time. I think his reflexes have dimmed. I think that he has benefited from, in recent fights, fighting a former sparring partner who had a problem dealing with right hands over the top in Kevin Mitchell, right? And, of course, fighting in front of friendly fans at home who were going to give him the benefit of the doubt with the judges in close fights. Now, the concern I have in this fight, and Crawford's a little bit better than a two-to-one favorite, is the fact that Crawford is a young guy who doesn't have a lot of experience in big fights. Few knew who he was before he fought Breedis Prescott. And here, you're asking a young guy to cross the Atlantic Ocean to fight before 10,000 Scots against a local hero. That's a tall order. I think many Americans go overseas and literally, like Malik Scott, fall apart. Right? You know, get hit with some shots and then start to fall apart. I don't think Americans understand just how passionate, just how involved, just how loud crowds overseas can get. So I do have concerns about Crawford's emotional preparation for what he's going to encounter. I know he said all the right things in interviews. I know he said, hey, I'll be fighting Ricky Burns, not, you know, 10,000 Scotsmen. Okay, fine. But, you know, again, when you're in the ring in a championship fight and the bullets are flying, you've got to make split-second decisions. You've got to stick to your game plan. I don't have the comfort here of knowing that this guy has been on this big a stage, right, on foreign soil. I'd feel better if I were dealing with, let's say, someone like Carl Frotch, who I know has fought on both sides of the Atlantic in big fights, right? Someone like David Hay, who I know went over to France won the cruiserweight championship, went over to Germany, won the heavyweight championship. Okay, fine. A guy like that is accustomed to traveling. Have gun, will travel. Terrence Crawford has a gun. The question is whether it travels with him. Let me talk a little bit more about Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns has a nice jab, but I view Ricky Burns as a guy who's lost some foot speed, who also is what I call a turtler, right? He has the same problem to me that Joshua Clotty has. He's too passive. In other words, if you get inside on Ricky Burns, Ricky Burns is not throwing anything back. He just covers up, right? It's kind of like a rope-a-dope strategy. But he's not doing what Ali did when Ali rope a dope Foreman, right? If you go back and look at that fight, folks, the Ali Foreman fight was a close fight before the knockout, right? Ricky Burns literally just, like Joshua Clotty, just covers up and throws nothing back. <clears throat> what Ray Beltran did 
is what Terrence Crawford has to do. When Ricky Burns starts to turtle, Terrence Crawford should just stop fighting and look at him. Right? Don't empty the tank. Don't waste your stamina. If you're winning the rounds, if you have Ricky Burns on his back foot and he's turtling, Chobo, drop your hands. Right? Let everyone in the stands know you're ready to continue fighting and this guy's just turtling. Right? What Beltran did was Beltran waited him out. Then as Ricky Burns started to drop his guard, Beltran would hit him with counters. Understand, you can pressure a guy and look like you're pressuring a guy without throwing a lot of punches like Michael Cassidis did against Ricky Burns that gets blocked. Let me point out, too, the burden that turtlers like Ricky Burns have is when they're turtling, they have to still look like they're making the fight happen. So if Ricky Burns turtles, and rather than be a George Foreman, you know, be the dope part of Rope-A-Dope, and, you know, stay in front of him and waste your energy and tire yourself out, let's say Terrence Crawford takes a step back. Let's say Crawford's charismatic waves to Ricky Burns, right? Motions to the crowd to say, what's this dude doing? I'm here for a boxing match, right? Then Ricky Burns, the burden's on Burns to literally get close enough and get in the action enough against Terrence Crawford to make the turtling a viable strategy, right? Turtling works if you're fighting a foreman or a Cassidus who's in front of you bringing the fight to you. I believe Terrence Crawford is intelligent enough to realize that if Ricky Burns, in fact, forget the if, when Ricky Burns, starts turtling. Crawford doesn't have to bring the fight to Ricky Burns. He can hover. You understand, that's when a turtler looks bad. Ali would have looked bad against Foreman. If, when Ali goes over to the ropes and starts to do this, if Foreman would have just, the champ at the time, would have just stayed closer to the middle of the ring and had his hands out, like, hey, come on, let's fight forced Ali to actually fight him, Ali would have looked bad, right? If he continued to just go into a shell and expect Foreman to punch himself out, right? So if Terrence Crawford uses the entire ring, paces himself, dodges Ricky Burns's jab, isn't there for Ricky Burns's right hand, right? Doesn't stand and trade with Ricky Burns, but forces Ricky Burns to actually walk around the ring with him and fight him. If there are no moments in this fight where Terrence Crawford is just throwing punches into Ricky Burns' forearms, then I think Terrence Crawford should win this fight. Let me point out, because I consider both of these fighters to be above average defensively, and because I do have concerns about Terrence Crawford's inexperience in fighting fights before 10,000 screaming fans on foreign soil against local heroes, the bet I'm recommending here is the over nine and a half rounds, right? According to oddschecker.com, your payoff would be between 40 and 50 percent. You're not going to get rich on this fight. But I do believe this fight should make it into the later rounds. Understand, too, when we say the over nine and a half rounds, that means that the fight has to make it to the midway point of the 10th round. Right? You have to get by the one minute and 30 second mark of the 10th round. If you go to oddschecker.com right now, they're listing a lot of online books for people in jurisdictions that allow online betting. And they have different risk-reward scenarios for over-unders. You're going to have to check with your casino, right? They have an over and an under for 8.5 rounds, 9.5, 10.5. I like the 9.5 rounds. I'm expecting this fight to go over 
you might need to shop around for the bet. I believe they're saying that it's something like a 50% payoff on skybet.com. I like the over. In the Ricky burns Terrence Crawford fight, I expect Crawford to win the fight, but I'm not going to bet in that direction. Instead, I'm just going to take the over 10 and a half. Let me just say this too. With older fighters, you start to hear that they've had off nights. That certain things in their lives cause them to put out a less than great performance in a fight. You know, the truth, though, is if you look at films of Ricky Burns, you'll actually see that Ricky Burns, in my opinion, is slowing down. He got noticeably hurt in the Ray Beltran fight. If you go back even to the Michael Casitas fight a few fights ago, one of Burns' best moments, it looked like Ricky Burns was running out of gas in the later rounds. Right? He has a great jab. He's a tall guy. He uses distance. The problem is he's in with a guy who's a defensive master who's much more mobile than most of his opponents who will easily be able to dodge the jab and who will be able to get inside just like Ray Beltran did. So if Burns starts turtling and if Crawford knows how to do something other than what George Foreman did against Ali... If Crawford literally backs away and waits out the turtling, right? Because Burns is not offensive when he turtles. Crawford should be able to win the slow rounds. At a minimum, the action should be measured and should take this fight into the later rounds. I like the over in this one. I'm expecting the belt to change hands, but I'm not going to bet that because of the crowd dynamic. Right? The venue always matters. But understand, too, the local Scots know that their guy got a gift in his last fight. Right? There are only so many gifts that fans are willing to give. Right? Just like Nikolai Valuev against David Hay. People knew that Valuev got a gift against Evander Holyfield. So when he fought David Hay and they saw Valuev looking sluggish again, if you look at the film of the end of the fight, David Hay had turned the German crowd into a British crowd. Right? Here, if Ricky Burns looks as bad as he did against Ray Beltran, and keep in mind, even that crowd was booing Ricky Burns, right? Even that crowd seemed stunned at the end of the fight when they announced the decision. If we get another scenario like this, just like in the Nikolai Valuev case, don't be surprised if at the end of the fight, even the crowd is, you know, supporting Terrence Crawford. I like the over in this fight. Let me hear from you. I know the fight's coming up soon, so there's a little bit of urgency here. Leave your comments for me here online. And, of course, visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.